Hello, welcome to the zombie dance party. This is season number three, episode number five. I'm your host, Hive Tyrant 424 and this is my multiplayer server that I use to play on. I like somebody else's computer doing the background number crunching and, you know, handling all the textures and graphics and whatnot so that my computer can play the game with as little lag as possible and, you know, I can record the videos as well. As you can see, we are on day 42, the Blood Moon. Now, I have been playing on this server with triple XP. So my level and my game stage are far, far higher than normally would be by day 42. I thought that would, you know, make things more interesting and, you know, let me get to the higher levels of progression faster. Unfortunately, I, I chose the same settings and this, this particular server playthrough, if you will, to experiment with a new type of Blood Moon base. Now... <laughs> I I went I moved away from from pit traps and pit bases because the zombie behavior for underground trap or underground pits and 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 whatnot had been drastically changed. I don't remember what alpha it was where they started making the zombies a whole lot smarter, but I have no idea how they got in here like this. They're supposed to go through the tiny little chute that I have up top there and fall down into the room with blade traps and the electric fences. Now my saving grace here was that I set up my fences coming out of the side walls as you can see there. So the zombies are still getting hit by the electric fences which, you know, is probably the only reason I didn't get overwhelmed and, and just chewed up and eaten in the first five seconds of the blood moon i am however taking the beating as you can see and i've got demolishers we had a few demolishers show up on the last blood moon but nothing big and i did dig out the tr the, the pit almost the entire width of this whole floor that you see down there so I think that that's where this went wrong. Ugh, yes, dogs, just wonderful. <laughs> As you can see, the structure is, is still relatively intact. The zombies have found a way in. I don't know where it is. I'm gonna have to investigate that. Needless to say, this Blood Moon is not going at all the way I had hoped. Ooh, nice head explosion. Those are always fun. This Blood Moon is not going as I had hoped it would. Very obviously. There are some blade traps up there, you can see. That's supposed to be, eventually, I haven't gotten power to those yet because I haven't built all the blood or blade traps for it yet. But they're supposed to fall down through all of those blade traps sort of like a meat processor <laughs> and then they land at the bottom if they're still alive they get electrocuted and then i finish them off with bullets this is another major flaw in my building design i have an access tunnel that lets me come down here all the way from the top of my base the zombies early on before I had done a lot of building here they had right there right by where you see those steel grates there they had been beating on that particular section of the wall to get into that access tunnel so I reinforced it with steel and unfortunately they're still pounding on it they're not effectively getting through but that doesn't stop them from trying you know, again, they're supposed to fall into that little chute there that you can see. 
I put this door here to try and encourage them to walk onto the slopes, but they don't slide down the slopes the way they used to because they fix the the wedge tips so that zombies can actually stand on the very edges of those wedge tips. So this isn't working as either for me. Taking quite a pounding, I've got a sprained hand, I've got abrasions, I've got bleeding right now, and I have an infection. So I have pretty much most of the critical injuries that you can sustain in this game. The only thing I haven't sustained so far is a concussion and a broken limb. Though if I keep getting hit in the arms or the legs, I will end up with a broken leg or a broken arm. And that's just going to make things even worse. See, I can, I can encourage them to slide down that chute by hitting them. But if they walk on it, they just walk across it. They used to just slide down. Right now, the biggest design flaw, or the biggest problem I'm running into with this design is just how to get the zombies into the chute. I have no idea how I'm gonna get that fixed. I'm very fortunate that I've managed to find this, this M60. I, I actually, blind luck, found it on day 42, no, day 41, right before sunset. I was clearing out a POI and I managed to find this M60 in the in the loot at the end of the POI. But I haven't had time to put any mods on it, no ammo drum, no uh, rad remover. I, I barely made it back to the base in time for the blood moon. <laughs> so... I really like the way this, this, my base house is, is coming up and, you know, everything is going that way, but it's just, the Blood Moon is just not, the Blood Moon Tower, the pit, is just not working. Zombies are going every which way. I'm playing a reaction game right now. I'm not controlling the battle. They are. And I'm just going wherever I can to try and keep them from doing too much damage. I have one SMG turret sitting up here, one down on the ground covering the pit in case the zombies start beating on the walls. At least that was the intent. But it's it's just it's not it's not going well. <laughs> I just I have zombies everywhere in all places. I thought by putting three vault doors down here that the zombies wouldn't try and come this way because it's a lot of uh, block health they have to inflict damage upon before they can get through that to this access area here. This is like the the service walkway so I can come out and repair fence posts and whatnot but the zombies are actually, I'm sure now you guys are in there. Those whites sound really wicked by the way. I like the way they're, they're, they growl. These guys here. They sound so cool. <laughs> they look pretty gross too. I like it. They, somehow they, they, I never even thought to bring my wiring tool and you know any electronics repairs down here. My blade traps, as you can see to the right there, are not powered. And it turns out that the relay that I had stuck on the wall there to connect them to the power source that got damaged or blown up or broken somehow. Yeah, worried about loot because that's a priority in this in this particular episode, right? <laughs> It's the the hoarder in me, and uh, unfortunately, in one alpha or uh, several alphas ago, I don't remember which one it was, 
uh, loot bags disappeared very quickly. Like they would, they would despawn about as quickly as the zombie corpses do. And so it, I just, it got Pavloved into me. I see a loot bag. I, I, I try and grab it as soon as possible so that I get as much loot as I can. And especially, you know, on a blood moon like this, where things are just not going well at all. I think I'm going to need every scrap of loot that I can get. Look at that door. That door is just mangled. I'm gonna, this is a door that I have set up just to give me access to inside the pit. It was supposed to be so that I could come in and, and pick up all my super huge amounts of loot at the end of the Blood Moon, but it's it's just not working. When they're inside this this pit, inside this this meat processor here, it works very well. They go for the arrow slits because it's the it's the easiest way out of this room, which puts their backs to me, so that you know I can put bullets into the backs of the heads of the demolishers without worry about detonating them, and that works really well. The trouble is that I'm standing beyond the the edge of the top of this tunnel and the zombies have found a way in i'm assuming that they they dug a hole in the dirt and then through the stone because each block of stone only has 500 hit points as opposed to the what is it 5000 hit points that each of the concrete blocks has when you've upgraded uh, a rebar block i think it's 5000 hit points the steel blocks have like 7500 health plus the the health of the concrete something like that it's some ungodly amount so yeah I think by by digging out the empty space around the shaft of this meat processor that I've built I think by digging that out and making it at a path of least resistance by the zombies just digging through five or ten layers of dirt and rock that's probably why the base is is failing I haven't heard any demolishers explode yet and I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna categorize this particular part of the episode uh, under you know what was I thinking <laughs> open open ground I have one SMG turret, which is probably almost out of ammo by now. The auto shotgun, which, you know, it's, it's not a bad gun. And the M60. I'm not prepared for a run and gun. I'm not prepared for having, you know, just open space between me and the zombies for them to close the distance. I mean, look at them. They're just running their little butts off. And here I am just standing still. An irradiated cop. Yeah, that's not good. But he doesn't have a head anymore, so we're all good there. Running dogs. And this is... <laughs> again, what was I thinking? SMG turret or my shotgun. I, I don't know which one set off the counter. But there we have it. The ultimate failure in a blood moon. I died. Yeah. Now, all the zombies are supposed to return to, you know, regular nighttime zombie type behavior. But as you can hear, the blood moon music is still going. And as soon as the zombie stepped in front of my turret, it's all on again. <laughs> I just, I know this is not going to go well. It hasn't gone well so far. I've just been running my butt off and trying to stay alive, trying to minimize the damage the zombies are doing to my base. Ooh, Screamer. You never, you never see those on Blood Moons, do you? I don't remember ever seeing one before. All right, turn those traps back on and try and get some damage inflicted on whatever lands in the pit. So far, it hasn't been much. 
I wasn't prepared f to be face to face with the zombies for this blood moon, so I did not have my tool belt set up or my hot bar, or whatever you want to call it. I didn't have that set up for medical close encounters sort of thing. You can see I've got a couple of weapons and some grenades that I picked up and I brought the nail gun so that I could repair the concrete post that the zombies were supposed to be beating on to try and get to me. <laughs> well, I got another 20 minutes to go. I'm just riding this out trying to survive. I haven't done a too good a job. I've already died. But uh, don't want to die again. Oh, great. A demolisher. <laughs> Those demolishers sound cool too. Kneecap him. There we go. Made his head pop off and he's still green. That's good. You, sir, can go away. That's the relay that got broken so early on, like in the first two minutes of the Blood Moon. Not sure how that happened. Oh, 4 a.m. Thought you would never show up. Get this wiring set back up so that if any zombies come in while I'm assessing the damage, hopefully I can chew a couple of them up. There's a lot of damage. I'm not even sure I want to continue trying to use this this pit base. I may just abandon this pit, cover it with some concrete so the zombies can't get into it, and go back to above ground bases. I'm I'm not familiar enough with the digging dynamics and and how the zombies path to to really make uh, an effective pit base. So I might. Just cover this up, build myself a, a, a good above ground tower like I've I've built before and you know, maybe come back and explore pit traps once I've learned a bit more about the new zombie path thing. So I really appreciate you watching the episode. We'll have to see where things go for the next one. And uh, thank you again. I have set up a Patreon account. The link is in the description of the video.